an honor and privilege just to share with you again. The title for today is What is Fear? Someone once said that the only thing that we really need to fear is fear itself. But today I want to cast the light of God's word and eliminate this thing we call fear. A good, uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, your grace and your mercy. I just want to start with this message. I just want to get into it. Because Father, the enemy has lied to so many people for so long. And it is about time that we uh, cast him out and, and send him to where he needs to go. I honor you, I praise you, and I worship you. And I vow to give you the glory in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Our Lord, Savior, and Messiah in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, uh, what I wanted to start saying is that a good acronym for fear is the well-known false evidence appearing real. Think of a child that, that, that is uh, screaming in fear one night and says, there's something in my room and you go in there and then it's only the shadows, a shadow cast by a coat hanging on a coat hanger or, or, or anything else, a curtain, anything that, that cast a false shadow to appear real. But the moment you switch on the light, they see it for what it really is. And this is what I want to do this afternoon. I really felt God just stirring on my heart. I listened to something this week and, and, and I, such a, a, a lot of other things, even from, from the, the, the Sunday morning message as we were ministering in, in the congregation. And I just felt I really need to speak on this. So the American actor Gary Bussey or Bushy, I'm not sure how to pronounce his surname, has this to say on the topic. He says uh, also that, that uh, um, fear is a false evidence appearing real. And then he says, it is the dark room where Satan develops his negatives. People fear is 100% opposed to faith. As it is li literally asking us, uh, what if God is not enough? What uh, if the doctor is really uh, uh, right and, and you are... You've got a disease or an infirmity that is incurable. What if there's no turnaround for your finances? What if God cannot provide for you? What if this? What, what will you do if your business goes under? What if this? And, and this starts uh, sowing seeds of doubt in our mind. And if we allow the seeds to fall and germinate, we have got problems. And today I want to come and I want us to look at fear. So... This is, this is all, all these little thoughts. Uh, we must understand it, work, it starts with thoughts. All these thoughts are, are thoughts that are, that, are, that are putting things out there. But it actually leaves it to us to decide. It is our choice whether we uh, take captive that thought immediately and deal with it. Ignore it. Shun it. Or put it aside and say, I won't even listen to this. Or whether we think, well, maybe, what if? Now, uh, let us look at the Bible. The Bible's word for, uh, the, the word in the Bible for, uh, the Hebrew word in the Old Testament for fear is, is your ray. Now, your ray is a primitive root and it means, uh, means to fear, to, to morally, uh, uh, or to fear, to, um, to frighten, to be afraid of something, to make afraid of something. To be dreadful, to put something in fear, fearful, fearfully, uh, fearing. In Greek, it is the word delos, which is uh, timidity or uh, delia. Now, looking back at COVID-19, I'm coming back to this uh, Hebrew word for fear right now. And you will be astonished. Because the governments of the world had a field day of instilling all kinds of fear into their subjects. The sad thing is that all the people, the leaders, the ministers of the gospel, everyone that had a backbone that stood up against us in their families, in their circle of friends, in, in amongst their, their co-workers, the moment you said, well, I, I don't really believe this, you were made out to, to be a selfish conspiracy see, a theorists, people that, that are just going off and needed a tinfoil hat. Well, the problem is, the world have chosen to believe these lies instead. They believed that in spite of what God's word said, in spite of what God's word promised, they've believed that. And the Bible word now, I'm coming back to the Hebrew word, Yaro, or Yorai, Yorai, 
your ray says the following. Listen to this. That which you believe, that which you fear, that you serve. That is what you serve. You serve fear. And people, uh, the, the, the enemy is a very, very, very hard task master. master. And if you are going to fear and, 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 and this, this uh, your ray, if you uh, go in and bow down and say, oh, I'm so sorry, uh, uh, sorry, uh, government, I believe that that which you want to do uh, is, is the best for me. And you start believing the lie. In the end, look what happened. People started uh, uh, shouting at their friends. But you're just selfish. You don't love me. If you really loved me, you would have put on a mask and all this rubbish. And we, 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 we fell for all those things. And the only way to stop concentrating on fear is to see what it, for what it is and to stop feeding it. We need to, uh, to, to turn off the source of fear, turn off certain social media channels, uh, cut off all the stuff. Uh, be careful of what you feed. You know, all, we all know the story of the, the man that his grandson came to him and there was the, this two wolves, a black wolf and a, and, a, and a white wolf, and nothing to do with races now, thank heavens. And, and, and they asked his uh, uh, uncle or, or granddad, what do you do with these? And they said, that's the ones that I fight with. And he says, who wins? He says, the one that I feed the most. You see, whatever you feed in your spirit, that will be this, uh, the, the, the one that is victorious. If you feed the lies, you will get, uh, uh, end up in the end believing the lie, living the lie, living according to the lie. You need to stop all of this. Fear of all kind. And not a fear of, uh, is normally not a fear of that specific thing. Many people say, well, I'm afraid of heights. I'm afraid of, 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 of water. I'm afraid of swimming. I'm afraid of a snake, of a spider. I'm afraid of whatever. The thing is, that is not really the source of your fear. The source of your fear is you're afraid of dying. Because if I fall from the sky or from a high ladder or from an aircraft or parachute, I'm going to die. If I, if I fall in the water, I'm going to drown. So it's all a fear of death. And the Bible says that we don't need uh, to, to fear death. death. Where is your sting? Why would I fear you? Because I serve a God that even if I die this side of the grave, I will be with God for eternity. We don't need to fear death. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Very, very well known piece of scripture. But so important. It says in verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now have you now concentrated on what you have just read? Have you really listened to this? It says that fear is a spirit. This is the normal King James Version Bible, not my interpretation of the scripture. Let's read it in the Amplified. 2 Timothy 1 in the Amplified verse 7 says, For God they don't give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven and cringing and fawning fear. But he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. So it's God saying to you, I haven't given you the spirit of fear. What are you afraid of? Why do you cringe? Why are you uh, cowardly looking at this and says, okay, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just play along. I'll just go along with whatever you say. If you put, tell me to put on the mask, I'll put it up. If you tell me to put on a bigger one, I'll put it up. If you say it mustn't be uh, of this tissue type of paper anymore, it must be of cloth, then I will put that up. No, but now it's not enough. It, it must be something with a breather, then I'll put up a breather. I will cover myself like a mummy. Cowardice. And God hasn't called us to do that. God has called us to stand up and stand out and make a difference in this world. And God is saying, oh, but I haven't given you that spirit. Why are you operating under that spirit? So whenever you are faced with fear, know that it is not God who is offering this to you. You know the story of, of, of uh, which we heard as kids, uh, just, a, just a old story, a fairy tale, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. How, how when she went to, to live with them in the forest, fleeing, afraid of going to be killed. 
the witch comes and she and she uh, puts on a disguise and she stands there and she offers him an apple. And she doesn't even look at the, the person behind all of this. She just see this beautiful red apple in the story. And it's a poisoned apple. And now I want to ask you, you that say, well, I don't believe in fairy tales. Well, I want to tell you, you teach your kids. Make sure you don't accept uh, sweets from a stranger. You don't accept a ride from a stranger. But mom and dad, why do you jump on every bus? Why do you uh, uh, take everything that comes along? Everything that the devil holds out to you. All the temptations, all the stuff of this world. Why are you so easily led astray? Because if you stood on the, in the word and on the word of God, you wouldn't have been fooled by this. But it's because we do not have the word inside of us. It's somewhere in my Bible, on my bookcase or wherever it is in the drawer. But it needs to be inside here, the word of God. So what did God gave us? If he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, well, let's go back to 2 Timothy. He says, I, I'm giving you power. What power is that? It's the same root word of Acts 1 verse 8 where he says, And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That power is dunamis power, where the word dynamite comes from. A force, literally or figuratively, specifically miraculous power. Usually, by implication, the miracle itself. It is the ability, abundance, meaning and might. So it is, is the ability and the, and, and the, and the, the might that the, 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 the gives you the, the, the power to withstand everything. I've, I've got. And you know what? In that power, in Acts 1 verse 8, that where God has promised, that is in the continuous tense. He didn't say, well, once I will give you the power to overcome. But he says you will receive power in the continuous tense. Every time you need the power, you can just uh, draw on that power because it's there. I've given you it in abundance, overflowing, as long as you stay a true to God and under His guidance, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and not all the spirits in the world, and definitely not the spirit of fear. And what next uh, else did He give us? Love. What love? 1 John 4 verse 18 says, There is no fear in love. Wow! But perfect love casteth out all fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So this is a love in and through we know that we know that we know that God loves us and that we can cast away all doubt and all fear. That I can stand up and say, I'm sorry, but this is not what God has said. And this is what, what we've done and what we've been trying to stand on all through the COVID pandemic. We call it the, the COVID pandemic, but let's not go there today. But we said, sorry, but I cannot bow before this because this is not what the word of God says. And the sad thing is, it wasn't only the, the sinners, it wasn't only the bad people, it wasn't only the drunks and, the, and, and whatever you want to call the people that, that, that sin. It wasn't only them. It wasn't the murderers and the rapists that followed this. I know uh, in the prison uh, that, that even the, uh, this prison is locked up, that they refused to be, to, 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 to be vaccinized and said, but, but I don't believe in this stuff. We stood on the word that says, through Jesus' stripes I am healed. God is able to take me through this. God is able when he promised that he said, I will not put the sicknesses or the disease of Egypt on you. This is the God that we serve. We can stand. We may stand. And I'm not coming against you. And I'm not attacking you. And if, and if, and if you have uh, fallen for the lie, thank God there's always another chance before God. As long as we are alive, before He's coming back, we have got a chance. But now is the day. Make that decision. The next one is He gave us a sound mind. 2 Corinthians 10 in the Amplified I read from verse 5. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that set it up against the true knowledge of God and we lead every thought and purpose away, Captive into the obedience of Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One. What does the scripture say? It says we are standing on the Word of God. And we use the Word of God to, to, uh, against these arguments and theories of the world. 
Again, these things, we are doing it for your best. Now, Jesus Christ died so that I can have the best. The enemy, according to John 10, 10, comes to steal and destroy. But my God, my Jesus, my Savior, my Messiah came so that I can have life and that in abundance. And therefore, I refuse to fear. I refuse to, to allow the fear to, 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 to come over me, to paralyze me. I will stand up. I can say what he says over me and about me and about my situation. All I need to be sure of is that I am in the will of God. I'm doing what he wants me to do. There's about 30, 365 verses in the Bible saying fear not. The scripture for every day saying fear not. Don't you think God doesn't understand what is going on in the world? Don't you think when you read all of this, that when God says something 365 times, that He knows the enemy is going to try you. And one of these most successful, most dangerous weapons is something called fear. But it is false evidence appearing real. There's a song that says, fear not. I'm going to play out with that. But let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that the, you are the opposite of this fear because fear is, is based on lies. But today, Lord, I serve the God whose Son said in front of everyone, I am the way, the truth, and life. And Father, this also it continues to say, and nobody can come to the Father except through me. So today we come acknowledging Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as the way that we need to walk. And we enter in through Him. We come to Your throne of grace and we ask boldly, Lord, help us. Help us cast away this fear. Help us to take captive all the negative thoughts of fear and despondency. And let us not look at the news. And if, if the news uh, disturbs me every evening, why will I watch it every evening? It is like somebody that knows there's a hole in the road and it damages my vehicle, yet every morning I, I drive through that hole. It is a fool that does that. See, if the news disturbs me, Lord, why don't I switch off the news? Why don't I cancel the, the, that uh, newspaper that delivers all this stuff to my house? Why will I pay for it? If something important really happens, there will be someone very soon coming along that will share that with me. If I need to know it. Now I thank you Lord. That we can come to you. And say Lord help us. Not to feed the fear. Not to feed the liar. But that we will stand up. And be accounted for. And stand with the King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords. Amen. I bless you in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Be blessed. God loves you. Fear not.